This is our first lesson in our unit on circular motion and gravity. An axis is a line about which circular motion occurs. In these pictures here, this record, there's an axis right in the middle. This wheel, there's an axis, which we call an axle. For the swimmer, the axis is somewhere around the shoulder, the line about which circular motion occurs. The term rotation refers to the idea that the axis is within the object. When something is rotating, it is spinning. Revolution refers to the axis being outside the object. For example, the Earth rotates on its axis, which of course causes day and night, but it revolves around the sun. And this, coupled with the tilt of Earth's axis, causes the seasons. The axis of the Earth is within the Earth, which is why we say that the Earth rotates on its axis. But when the Earth goes around the Sun, you can imagine an axis going through the Sun and the Earth spinning around. So in, in that case you can see that the Earth is outside of the axis and we call that sort of circular motion revolution or the Earth revolves around the Sun. Let's talk about the seasons for a moment. Here we have a model of the Earth. Here's the North Pole. There's the South Pole. It turns out that the line parallel to Earth's axis of revolution does not coincide with the Earth's axis. There is a 23 and a half degree difference between the Earth's axis and a line parallel to Earth's axis of revolution. So if we take the case on or about June 21st, which in the northern hemisphere we call the summer solstice, and in the southern hemisphere it's called the winter solstice. This is the day in the northern hemisphere of longest sunlight. And let's investigate that a little bit. Let's say we have the sun somewhere over here on the right shining its rays on the earth. You can see that the northern hemisphere gets the lion's share of the sunlight on June 21st. If we take two portions of sunlight, those two portions contain the same amount of energy. You can see how those two yellow portions are the same height. So they contain the same amount of energy. But in the northern hemisphere, that same amount of energy is concentrated in a smaller area. Whereas in the southern hemisphere, that amount of energy is dispersed over a much bigger area, which is why in June in the northern hemisphere it's summer, and in June in the southern hemisphere it's more winter-like conditions. And you can see that in the northern hemisphere there are in the polar regions places where the sun doesn't ever really set, whereas in the Antarctic, you have days of almost 100% darkness. Suppose we now go to December 21st, six months later. Now the Sun is on the other side of the Earth, relative to the Earth, because the Earth has gone halfway around. So the Sun is now over on this side, but the tilt of the Earth remains the same. So what that means is you can see now that the southern hemisphere gets the lion's share of the sunlight and the northern hemisphere is a little bit shorted. If again we take equal amounts of sunlight you can see that in the southern hemisphere that amount of energy is concentrated in a smaller region and in the northern hemisphere it's spread out which is why in December it's winter in the northern hemisphere and it's summer in the southern hemisphere. And again, you can see that now in December in the Arctic regions you have days of complete darkness almost, and in the Antarctic days of brightness for almost 24 hours. Suppose now we're at on or about March 21st, which in the northern hemisphere we call the vernal equinox, in the southern hemisphere we call the autumnal equinox, and basically as the viewer we are now the Sun. There we are, and our sunlight is heading
towards the Earth, and some of it will hit the Earth, and you can see that the sunlight is dispersed evenly in the northern and southern hemispheres. Equal time of light and darkness on March 21st or thereabouts. It turns out that the Earth is going that way. If we're the Sun, the Earth is traveling that way relative to the Sun. Final thoughts on rotation, revolution, and the seasons. An axis of rotation is an imaginary line about which circular motion occurs. If the axis of rotation is within the object under consideration, the object is rotating. If the axis of rotation is outside the object, the object is revolving. Day and night are due to Earth's rotation. The seasons are caused by Earth's revolution around the Sun in conjunction with the non-perpendicular tilt of Earth's axis relative to the plane of Earth's revolution.